You're here, I'm Queer, and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video, for I will be making The Scarlet Witch. If you are a Marvel fan, then I'm sure you know the chaotic Disney Plus show, WandaVision. Scarlet Witch has always been one of my favorites, especially the X-Men Evolution and the Wolverine and the X-Men version. I never knew the extent of her powers growing up and only thought that it was just plain hexes, like she can hex and curse people. Now I understand her hexes, her chaos magic, and much more, and I'm excited to see more of the Scarlet Witch. Although, I am still bitter that they changed her and Pietro's mutant status, but they will always be a part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants for me. I'm still hoping now that Disney owns X-Men, they can at least hint those stories in and finally give them a more comic accurate look. Speaking of looks, this is the look I designed for Scarlet Witch, and of course, it is inspired by her classic look. I wasn't a fan of the battle costume they gave Elizabeth Olsen because it was giving me Jean Grey vibes, and I honestly prefer jeans much more since it gave me drama. But now, knowing that Fox still owned the rights to anything mutant at that time, I understand why their stories were retconned for Avengers and why they couldn't use the classic costumes and titles. I wanted to give this doll a contemporary take on the classic Scarlet Witch look from the comics, and I drew inspiration from a corset bodice of a 1998 Thierry Mugler. You guys know my obsession with a good Mugler silhouette, and I couldn't pass it up. I actually wanted to save this for an Emma Frost look, but decided it fits Wanda much more. I gave her big beautiful brown hair, highlighted by her iconic headdress or wimple, a neck piece to gather her dramatic cape, you know, the one that she deserves, rose-colored catsuit braced under an armored bodice, let's say that it's made with vibranium, if you know, you know, and a pair of opera-length gloves and thigh-high boots. I cannot wait for you guys to see the chaos that this custom ensued, but I hope you guys enjoy the journey. For Miss Wanda Maximoff, I will be using this Barbie Generations of Dreams 50th anniversary that I actually got from a thrift store and the dress I still need to clean. But of course, it is your beautiful model muse pose. As you can see here, I am... I have been so in love with the model muse Barbies, you know, just because they are the model their model muse. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna be using her for Miss Scarlet Witch. And this specific face mold I don't think I've ever worked on. It is the Lara um, face mold. Um, and she looks gorgeous and the features are pretty sharp. And so I'm actually really, really excited to repaint her. So because I want Scarlet Witch to look like she's casting spells, I am going to give her Lily James's hands, or I will be attempting to. As you can see, Lily James over here has the princess elegant hand pose, and it looks like she could be casting spells and magic. And so I want to make a mold out of this and try to replicate it and duplicate it with resin so yeah and if you're wondering why i just don't put this head mold onto lily james's body it's because i really do like the model muse body it is quite different than the cinderella body as you can see this one is kind of like just a barbie and the legs is really what sells it you know the legs is posed there's one pop knee over here and lily james is just straight and I'd rather work with this beautiful doll already, and I just need to change her hands and, you know, give her some different magic pose. Look at that. See? Look at that. I'm trying to come up with the vision here, and that is the vision. Look at that. Let's remove her head so we can remove the hair, so we can prime her, we can, you know, prep her up for our new face up and also our wig.
Now let's take our acetone or nail polish remover with acetone in it and remove her factory paint. And wow, I mean this face mold is definitely different. I don't think I've worked with this and I'm so excited. Now let's go ahead and make her wig. I know that Elizabeth Olsen's Wanda has red hair and in the comics she definitely there are some versions of her with actual like red red hair but I definitely like the contrast of brown hair with her red outfit a little bit more um, just dark, darker hair I think matches her more for me and also her red hair and also the red leather trench coat is giving me too much Jean Grey vibes and so yeah I really want the brown for her. Clearly nothing about this is gonna be realistic you know just from the hair itself it's definitely comic book definitely drag queen inspired and I'm so excited to style it. Now let's try and make a mold out of Cinderella's hands and I'm using Mold Star Series 16 Fast Part A and B and as usual you just want to measure it and also just get two equal parts together and mix it and work as fast as you can. I was definitely really excited for this because I was like, ooh, I can just recreate so many pairs of delicate hand poses and just give them to dolls that doesn't have that delicate hand pose, the princess, the renaissance pose, and um, yeah. And by the way, I had to hold her for this, and this took roughly 30 minutes to set. After that, you want to demold it just really, really carefully. You don't want to disrupt the mold itself. And over here, I'm just trying my best, slowly but surely. And of course, I made the other hand off camera. And now let's go ahead and take our smooth cast 300 part A and B. Same exact thing. You just want to mix it equal parts of volume. And this is going to be our resin. And this specific one actually sets in under three minutes. So you really want to have your timer on. You want to work and mix diligently. You definitely don't want it to start setting while you're still mixing. So make sure you have that time ticking. And now it's time to demold it. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut the side over here just so that it's easier to access the mold without breaking the fingers. And alas, it's a failure. And I definitely tried multiple times off camera and I wasted so many resin. So the backup plan was just to yank Cinderella's arms off. I mean, you know, it's in the stories anyway. She's not, this is nothing new to her. You know, let's have her not look. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the bicep area over here and I will screw that on to our Scarlet Witch dolls. So it's kind of the same concept as my Bratz dolls. So now this actually adds a swivel effect to her arms, which is actually pretty good. It's much better than what I had intended. So here we have both arms. Oh my god, poor Cinderella. But it had to be done, you know, for the sake of our hex and chaos magic. And over here I'm just cutting off the actual Barbie so we can attach Cinderella's arms to her. And now I'm just taking my hand drill and also power drill later on so we can drill this a little bit. Don't go overboard because I feel like you will hit the actual joint and may destroy it. And I'm taking the same exact hanger bolts that I've been using for my Bratz Customs for their shoes and it's literally the same exact concept. Now I'm drilling the actual arms so we can attach it to the hanger bolts. And now we're done with the arm modification 
and I'm really actually happy with the failure because this gives it more um, not articulation but more poses because of the swivel the swivel definitely enhances what she could do look at that oh my god amazing and I'm really really happy with the accident or the failure for this one so yeah now let's go ahead and start with our body modifications I definitely want to go ahead and give her the cinched waist, the Mugler vibes, the Mugler silhouette, and obviously I am going to sculpt her costume onto her. I'm using wire to act as a base and also her spine. This way we have something to adhere the bodies together at the top and the bottom, and it gives our epoxy clay something to hold onto. And I'm using hot glue just as a temporary fill for our wire. And you should have something like a Filipino manananggal type of look. Now let's go ahead and take our epoxy sculpt and start making her costume. We want to start by building the base silhouette first and then we add details after the main shape is completely done. And the main focus for this is to really blend in kind of like the rib cage area to the waistline to her hips and doing that as seamless as possible. Of course, we're going to go back into this with our sandpaper to really smooth everything out, but we're definitely going to cover everything again with a thin layer of clay later because that will be her quote unquote fabric, her quote unquote costume. I'm just taking my super glue over here so I can glue the joints shut. Um, it is going to be a fixed pose for the most part because obviously we're sculpting the outfit. And over here I am building her hips just a little bit and I'm also blending any visible joints. I cut out this paper and I measured it multiple times to the body's configuration and this will act as the corset's hip panels. And if you try this, obviously you can exaggerate it or you know, you can modify it as extra as you want it to be. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take my warbler over here and cut this exact same shape. And I'm cutting two of them. Now we can activate that using our heat gun so it softens and we can now adhere it to our doll and you can use super glue, you can press this a little bit and it will stick and just make sure you pose it um, how you want it. And obviously you can still kind of modify it, just take a heat gun again and shape it in place. Now I did super glue the warblers to the body just to make sure that they don't move while I am sculpting and now I am just blending everything together. Now filling in this part was really really satisfying for no freaking reason. I was just like, I love sculpting and shaping this corset panel over here, the hip panel, and I just loved creating this shape. For some reason, it definitely gave me like retro vibes, like space agey vibes, and I was so into it. And now for the bustier part, I just drew this and I traced it onto our warbla over here. And same exact thing, I'm gonna activate it with our heat gun and shape it to our doll. I really want this bustier to have a dimension, a really sharp dimension. So over here, I am just taking my clay and I'm going to shape it as much as possible. I want it to have the illusion that it is a boned corset type of look. And so over here, I am just defining this and I'm going to sculpt the quote unquote seam of the bustier. 
The lines that I'm sculpting are obviously decorative, but I feel like it also emphasizes the armor feel that I'm trying to give Scarlet Witch. For the most part in the comics, her costumes all just kind of look like fabric, and for this one I definitely wanted an elevated look, and I wanted it to kind of match the whole vibe that the MCU is giving all of its superheroes, and I thought it would be a cool take on a modern Scarlet Witch. When working with epoxy sculpt, it usually dries in about a day or, or so, or maybe just a little bit under. So you definitely want to plan ahead on kind of the steps that you want to sculpt. So as you can see, I finished kind of the bustier first, and then I went to go to the back. Even though it completely cures in under a day, epoxy sculpt kinda does have a working time that you want to focus on. I've noticed that the first hour, it's completely fine, but anything after that, it makes it really, really difficult for epoxy to be placed. Like, it's not as soft as your usual. It's not, obviously, like I said, it's not gonna be completely cured, but it is more difficult to shape and kind of blend in. As you can see over here, I'm using a metal sculpting tool because epoxy was starting to become a little bit harder to sculpt with my rubber and also silicone tools. And I was like, I'm not gonna break these tools right now. And so I whipped out the metal tools. We're back with Warbla and I just cut out these two shapes for her boots. You know, I really love those thigh-high boots, especially the ones with an angle, a side angle. I'm just always so drawn to thigh-high boots like this for some reason, and my dream is to have something like this in real life. Of course, it's not a Model Muse Barbie without the Model Muse pumps. And to completely secure it, I ended up super gluing the pumps to her feet because obviously we are going to put epoxy sculpt on top of it and we're gonna try and blend the shoes to her skin. If you're going for a more loose-fitting type of boots, whether it's thigh-high, knee-high, or calf-high boots, um, and if you want it to be more thicker and stuff, you can definitely add more clay to the overall legs. But I really wanted this to be sleek, I want it to be skin-tight, so I'm only adding um, clay to those um, areas where I needed to blend in with her skin. Obviously, I will be adding clay to like her knees and ankles and all of that to act as wrinkles. We are going to sculpt some wrinkles here and there to make it look like it's fabric. When I was sculpting her angles, I literally realized, I was like, oh my god, Barbie dolls don't have that defined angles, like the bone in there. And so I thought that was kind of cool. And as you can see over here, I am sculpting the wrinkles behind her knees because when you wear boots, that area is definitely inevitable. Um, you, you can't get a sleek look for that. So this one just kind of makes it a little bit more realistic. Now we're moving on up back to her neck area for her neck piece and this will be kind of the one that connects her cape and so I just cut out a triangle out of Warbla and I'm gonna super glue that to her shoulders. And again with epoxy clay we're gonna try and connect her neck piece to that Warbla. We're gonna try and blend it, we're gonna try and make it uniform to her overall armor look. So yeah. I actually wanted to put more details and like line details to her neck piece, but I didn't want it to take away from her bustier, her corset armor, and so I just went for a simple hem design. And I realized after it's cured that the cape that I made her um, is not going to fit underneath this. As you can see, the space I made is a little bit too narrow, so I'm going to try and make it bigger. So unfortunately, 
I'm gonna have to cut it. Um, this is always bittersweet, you know, when you've already done it. But it's the same exact thing. I'm just gonna extend it. I made a bigger triangle over here. And it's an easy fix, you know. It just definitely delayed me another day. <laughs> Well, that cures, let's go and work on the arms. Over here, I have the same exact kind of template that I did for her boots, and I'm just gonna use it for her arms. Kind of like the boots, I love a good opera length gloves, especially with this type of angle. And the fun part is that because I made the gloves opera length, it actually conceals the joint, you know, the arm joint. So it looks more sleek, um, and it looks more clean, and I really, really love that effect because you would never know that the arms can actually rotate. And the same goes for the wrinkles for the gloves. Even though I want it to look skin tight, there are inevitable creases and wrinkles that must be sculpted to make it look realistic and really give it a dimension, especially when the arms are bent like this. You want to imagine the textile that you're trying to recreate. And for this one, I was trying to go for kind of like a leather type of vibe. And so I definitely looked up a lot of reference photos for the gloves and also her boots. Over time, like many other characters, they would introduce new power sets and abilities. And I really like the reality warping abilities of Wanda because it kind of makes sense with her being a Nexus being. She can exist in multiple universes and be a focal point of different realities. And now I have both of the arms sculpted. As you can see, it's really hard to tell because of the discoloration, but when it comes to paint, oh my god, everything is going to blend in together. Now let's go ahead and make her headdress, also known as a wimple, a medieval wimple. And I've always thought this was so freaking iconic for Scarlet Witch. Actually, even Polaris wears a wimple, her half-sister. You know, when they were all still mutants, you know what I mean? And I just love it. It kind of looks like an M for the House of M, you know, Magneto. I mean, it even kind of looks like Magneto's helmet. You know... I really do miss the whole family tree, you know, when Wanda and Pietro was, you know, Magneto's descendants, you know? But you never know, you never know, now that Disney owns X-Men, you never know, so I'm looking forward to it. Like, I definitely want to believe that they're not gonna leave Polaris hanging without a brother and a sister, so, um, I have my hopes up, you know, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be watching. Now I definitely wanted to reference something from WandaVision, and so I took her wimple there, the one that she wore for Halloween, and that's kind of the inspiration for this one. As you can see, it has the three sides, kind of like almost looking like a bat wing almost, and so I just made it exaggerated and I made it bigger to really look like the iconic Scarlet Witch. And now we're finally done with all of the sculpting. And yes, I sanded this off camera multiple times. You know, it's messy. I did, uh, I started with a 120 grit all the way to 2000 or 3000, I think, to really get it as smooth as possible. And now she is ready for some paint job. I'm so excited. The iconic Scarlet Witch actually was wearing tights under her entire costume, so she's literally covered from head to toe. The only thing showing is her face um, in terms of skin tone. So I'm using this pink pastel that I used previously for my Venus doll. And of course, I sprayed the doll overall with Mr. Super Clear so that the pastels or paint will actually adhere. And it was working fine, but I couldn't go into the really, really deep crooks and crannies of the doll. So I was like, let me go ahead and paint it for now in pink. This one is kind of like a bubblegum pink. And I will do one layer of paint so we can kind of have a clean base to add the pastels onto in the end. 
And of course, I sprayed it again with Mr. Super Clear, and now I am adding the pastels. And as you can see, it does have a beautiful shimmer to it, and that's why I really wanted it. Um, but it just doesn't cover every single, you know, small space. So I did my best to kind of cover everything. Now let's go ahead and paint everything else red, and this one specifically is called Cardinal Red, and I thought it was really really nice. It is a deeper, cooler tone red, which is so beautiful. It took a couple of coats to really make it as opaque as possible. I really wanted this to be completely a solid red, and it also depends on the brand of acrylic paints you use. So yeah. And of course, the Scarlet Witch wouldn't be caught dead without a good pair of Christian Louboutin. And yes, the bottoms are actually a different kind of red. It's a little bit more brighter. It's more of a cherry red. As I mentioned, they retconned Wanda's and Pietro's origin story, which is no surprise since most superheroes have multiple origins and versions, but as an X-Men fan, the Magneto family tree is now missing a set of twins. Like I said, for me, she will always be a mutant. Her and Polaris is a better duo, in my opinion, than her and Quicksilver. And so, yeah, that's still in my fantasy. <laughs> Which origin story do you guys prefer for our Scarlet Witch? And now I'm finally done coating the entire thing with red, as you can see over here. And I did spray it with Mr. Super Clear. I sprayed her entire body because we are going to add artificial shadows, artificial shading to the costume to really bring out the dimension and add more details to the costume. I'm using black pastels for the lines and also like the hem details of her costume, but I will go over it again with red because I didn't want it to be too dark. I want it to just be a really darker red. And now I'm taking pastels again and I'm adding the artificial shadows. And for this one, you just want to kind of imagine where you want the shadows to cast. It definitely does give the costume more dimension. And for this one, I mixed purple, black, and also red to kind of create an aubergine type of shadow. I thought that would look a little bit more better than just completely black. And shading the costume doesn't make it look too flat because if it's just one solid color, even though it is a 3D object, it will still look flat because the colors that we implemented is just a flat color. So shading like 3D things is really, really beneficial. You'll definitely see the magic of the shading over here as I shade the shin area of her boots. Her knees will literally pop out and have that beautiful shadow that is so realistic. And of course, the wrinkles itself will need to be filled with shadow because that is just the realistic thing to do. The shadows, the deeper the wrinkle is, the darker the shadows will be. And we're pretty much done with the body. Let's go ahead and work on her gloves. And this will receive the same exact treatment, coat the entire thing fully with the red acrylic paint, and then spray it with Mr. Super Clear, and then add shadows to the wrinkles and whatnot. For additional contrast, I painted the inside of her gloves with black. And to finalize everything, the crowning glory, literally, her headdress, the wimple, again, same exact thing. And I definitely wanted to add shadows to this headdress because even though the shape of it is WandaVision inspired, the way I sculpted it is actually Magneto's helmet inspired. Magneto's helmet is always very structured, it has so many angles, and I feel like shading this will definitely emphasize the angles that I tried to create. 
and now it's time to finally gloss everything up literally with Liquitex Professional Gloss Varnish. Also make sure after you shade with pastels make sure you set everything again with Mr. Super Clear because it will run but as you can see over here everything is safe and secured so yeah multiple coats of gloss varnish I did I believe four to five coats to really have the high shine effect and I glued three snaps over here so that her cape you know can just snap in and out Woo! I'm so excited for you guys to see the final look but I am obsessed with how glossy this is it's definitely like patent leather looking and I am obsessed Oh yeah, let's not forget about the gloves. Let's gloss that up too. I mean, I am obsessed. I need to make my own gloves like this. I mean, look at that. The wrinkles look so cool. The shading definitely like enhance the effect of it. And look how delicate this is. Oh my god, pose for me. Oh, okay pose for me like oh my goodness this is like a magazine ad for gloves and I am here for oh look at that like <laughs> I am obsessed oh wow oh yeah that is a pose right there I need to get this tattooed well I already have one but you know and of course we can't forget to gloss up the headdress as well And now we're finally done with the body. And as you can see over here, I assembled the gloves as well. The arms are back. And wow, I mean, the possibility of just having the rotating, swiveling arms definitely enhances all of the magical poses that I can give Scarlet Witch. Um, I mean, obviously, she's going to be forever standing, forever flying, but that's fine. At least she can move her hands. At least she can move her arms. And I am in love with this. I'm so in love. Now let's work on her face. As per usual, I sprayed her face with Mr. Super Clear first as a primer so we can actually draw on the face with our pencils, our pastels, our paint. And I'm just taking my caramel color over here to sketch out the look I want to give her. And over here, I'm giving her red eyes. I want to give her the glowing eyes. Although I think originally in the comics, she has blue eyes, which would have been a cool contrast overall with her red outfit. But I thought I wanted this to look like she's using her powers, so red eyes it is. And of course, you can't go wrong with a beautiful scarlet red color for the lips. For her eyeshadow, I was about to give her purple, but then I was like, hmm, May that may be too much of an Agatha Harkness look. And so I ended up, in the end, kind of giving her more of a neutral color eye. Um, it is going to be dramatic, of course. It's going to be smoky. But overall, I used neutral colors. Lots of reds and also lots of browns. I definitely want her brows to be darker in the end, so I'm trying my best to kind of ombre it out naturally. Usually eyebrows are a little bit more thinner in the beginning, and over here I'm just adding the black hair strokes. Um, so yeah, it would be a cool contrast with her beautiful brown hair. Now let's work on detailing her eyes. Let's go ahead and add some pupils and maybe some iris details over here. So yeah, I don't want it to be too dark. I still definitely want it to appear red from afar. Let me know down below who is your favorite superhero, whether it's DC, Marvel, or even Mars Ravelos. I like them all, but I may know more about Marvel collectively. Storm is number one. Now let's go ahead and define and frame her eyes with a good wing liner. 
I'm using blush over here to kind of act as a contouring for her. So I'm just doing this motion underneath her cheekbones. And then I'm also using a bunch of highlighter. Over here I have pink, red, silver, and gold. And I'm gonna mix it all up. These are resin pigment powders and they are great as doll highlighters. So let's go ahead and layer it up. You would still want to layer this with Mr. Super Clear as well. So um, on top of every layer, you want to put this highlighter to really kind of lock it in. By the way, if you're wondering what that silver thing is on her forehead, that is a pin that I kept there because that is actually how I will be attaching her headdress. And so I attached it there because sometimes when you make holes onto dolls, it will close over time. And so, yeah. Now I'm taking my white acrylic paint to give her some sharp catch lights. And I decided to give her a cute beauty mark over here, very Yasmin, very Dita Von Tees. And also because I was looking at my profile picture and I'm like, hmm, let's put a beauty mark. And now let's give her some lashes, the wiper blades to the eyes, <laughs> the curtains to the eyes. And I'm using individual fake human lashes for this one. I believe I used six per eye and I am adhering it with Elmer's glue wall. And now let's go ahead and gloss up her lips. And to finish it off, and because I can't help myself, let's go and add another layer of highlighter for this one. And this specific layer, I will not be spraying with Mr. Super Clear anymore. We are done. Once the lashes are on and the lips are glossed, I don't spray Mr. Super Clear anymore. So try not to touch the face. I try not to do it. And I only kind of rotate the head using like her ears or maybe the scalp. And um, yeah, I mean, look at her. She is glowing for the gods. She is literally brighter than all of the Infinity Stones combined, and our Nexus being can now be seen through the multiverse. Now let's go ahead and style her hair, and although she looks great with straight hair, I feel like giving her curls will give it more dynamic, it's gonna be more comic accurate, and of course, a little bit more drag queen-esque. You know, we're always going for the drag queen look, the drama, I mean, I am. I'm always going for the drama. And so, yeah. I'm really excited to see her new Scarlet Witch look in the MCU. We got a glimpse of the silhouette and it looks like the headdress is back. But I think she's still wearing a long coat. And honestly, I just want her dramatic cape back. Like, please give her a CGI cape or something. I will be so happy. And here is the cape that I made her. Let me give you an overview. As you can see over here, it's very dramatic. It's full and it is a lot. I did an invisible stitch to it, or at least I think I did. And look at how much gathering that is. That is a lot of fabric. That's why it ended up being so thick that I had to redo the neck piece. But attaching this, oh my God, for the first time I was like, ah, it was heaven. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like, I'm really proud of this, but wow, I mean, look at that. It's definitely like Cape Envy. Magneto is quaking. And now I'm just finalizing the style of her hair, which ended up being very Farrah Fawcett looking, but it's fine. And now let's add the wimple. Yes! Oh my gosh, she's almost done! She's almost there! To finish it all off, I am taking my yellow UV resin over here, a diamond from this nail kit, and I am giving her the Mind Stone as a wedding ring, so it can remind her of Vision. <laughs> 